Release the Kraken! Good morning, Hockey Nation fans. Good morning, Detroit Red Wings fans. You are loyal to the end, and it is coming up to the end. We're not that far away from the end of the NHL season. It is not getting more interesting for the Red Wings, but we did see the vaunted first-round draft pick, defenseman Simon Edmondson, who's been toiling in the AHL trying to upgrade his defensive skills, but make his NHL debut, and it was not too bad at all. We, you know, eventually this guy's going to be in the NHL. It might be sooner than later. I kind of thought maybe it'd take a little more time, but good for him. He's been playing pro hockey all season. He's played pro in Sweden. Uh, we know that he kind of struggled defensively, but he, he's a big guy with a lot of good offensive skills, which is not a bad thing to have. You kind of wish he was a right shot now that he got rid of Philip, rid of Philip Ronick, but what are you going to do? Unfortunately, Steve G and the Avs kicked the crud out of the Detroit Red Wings. Good morning, Run With Kings. Good morning, Real Deal Prime. Lucky Luciano. Yo. Good morning, gentlemen and ladies, if you're on. So Simon Edmondson played his first NHL game on the weekend for the Red Wings. He played about 15 minutes in this game. Unfortunately, when the reveal happened... The outcome was not much better. The Red Wings, I don't know. <laughs> I think I was waiting. <laughs> He's doing an interesting job, though. You have to admit that, like, they were much better at the beginning of the year. They made some moves to get some more assets. And this is just interesting. It's like a switch. They start losing. Now, they haven't had Michael Rasmussen in the lineup, which seems, like, to coincide with them losing <laughs> uh, and, you know relying a lot on Andrew Kopp is not seemingly going to work he is not a number two centerman and Michael Rasmussen with a big body and has been scoring was really important to this team and he got better and better and better good morning Danny Danny I hope you are doing well how is our friend Jose has anybody checked in on him does everybody have a way to get in touch with them so it was one one after the first and then after that, it was all Colorado Avalanche. That's all right. Michael, Michelle, whatever. 34 shots to 23, and yet the Red Wings lose. They did have to pull the goalie through this. So I believe Huso got yanked, and they put in Helberg, but the outcome was not much better. They actually outshot them, and they actually won more face <laughs> 63 to 37. But five to one would be the outcome for the Colorado Avalanche. This was a bizarre game. Devin Taves started off the scoring for the Colorado Avalanche, another member of that excellent mobile Colorado back end. Then Pia Suter tied it up with a nice shot with an assist from Dylan Larkin. Okay, good. I don't know what – I didn't catch what type of surgery he was having. Is it heart surgery or is it something else? And then in the second period is when the onslaught began and Nathan McKinnon getting his 30th from Cal McCarr. Stuart Malgan, is that who got that? Or Dennis Malgan. Oh, the former uh, Toronto Maple Leaf and Florida Panther. 
Bo Byram's been playing great. Bo Byram is an excellent defenseman. You just hope that Bo is healthy, and that's the biggest thing with him is the concussion problems have been just terrible to a very, very super talented player that was a big, big part of their Stanley Cup run and very underrated, gets his seventh of the season on the power play from Cal McCarr and Nathan McKinnon. <clears throat> oh, it's his neck. Oh, geez. Yeah, that, that's never good. Then Lars Eller acquired at the trade deadline from Nachushkin and Johnson. Wait, what? Was this Eric Johnson? Is Eric Johnson in the lineup? That could be really helpful. He gets his ninth of the year. And then Miko Rantanen, 46 goals in the years, guys. This guy, I think, is going to hit 50. What do you think? He has had such a phenomenal year. He is so underrated. He's such a quiet player. And he's a big guy that just has so much skill and ability. And he is just a terrific, terrific player. When you watch Miko Rantanen, you've got to be excited. And, you know, Nathan McKinnon's has injury problems all year. But look at his scoring. Like, he's got 88 points. But I think he's only played like 50-some-odd games. I mean, what a great player he is. So it's a little tough to see this, but... You know, basically, you had the goal from P.S. Suter, assisted on by Dylan Larkin. Billy Huso got shelled in this game. That's okie dokie. And then he is a fun player to watch. I agree. Miko Ranton, and so underrated. Part of this 2015, he's actually a year older than most of those guys with Patrick Laine, Sebastian Ajo, Yessi Puya Harvey. We know his hockey IQ is really not there. Uh, but he's a big, talented guy that was really dominant. And Billy Huso was part of that team. That 2015 World Junior Championship finish team that shocked everybody. I don't know why it's a shock looking back. And you had Miko Ranson in the mix. That two-year group was absolutely terrific. And the best of them might be Miko Ranson and probably and the second best is Sebastian Ajo, which is not what everybody thought. And sometimes I think these games go on when you're going through a draft. I think that... Uh, I think that, you know, a lot of times it does make you wonder where they'd be without him. He is such a terrific player. You don't have Gabriel Landeskog in, in the lineup for so long. He's your captain, consistent offensive producer, just a aggressive on the puck type guy. And then you've got Miko Ranson just quietly maintaining things while he's hurt and while McKinnon's hurt and while Camel Carr's hurt. I mean, how good is this guy? He's really good. <laughs> he can play a little bit of center too. He's not just a really good winger. You, like, you put him at center, and he's actually got some pretty good numbers. You know who doesn't have great numbers? Andrew Kopp. <laughs> Is he a minus two? I think it was a minus three in this game. I mean, but his face-off win percentage hasn't improved, but I just don't see this as being a solution here. Jonathan Bergeron has been very quiet. Dominic Kubelik back into his cave. None of these things help the Detroit Red Wings. I haven't heard much from Lucas Raymond. These are all painful things. Philip Zadina just does not seem to have it. Not for the NHL. Chase on who scored in his first three games up has gone quiet, but that that offense was helping them a little bit. But the biggest difference here since the trade deadline, probably the defense. They signed Olimata. They already have uh, Ben Sherrod, who is out this game. And Simon Edmondson in for Ben Sherratt. Jake Wallman, he's pretty darn solid. This is really good. And Ward Sider, we know, is a number one defenseman. So they really need Simon Edmondson to keep maturing and become an everyday NHL defenseman. Five to one, not the outcome that you want. As a Detroit Red Wing fan, if you're Colorado, you're happy because they're solidifying a spot in the playoff race. You would think so, but you know, there's something weird when, when they win the faceoffs, they're not winning the game. So there's something in this that I'm not understanding. We have to kind of come up with an analysis here. Uh, Carolina, get back in the win column. So they're still in first in this division, 98 points. But New Jersey is hot on their tail, 97 points. Now, Carolina has two games in hand. But Carolina is playing for the rest of the year without Svechnikov. That is not really good. That is really, really bad for them. We know Sebastian Ajo had a terrific game. He had a, did he have a hat trick and an assist the other night? 
But, you know, going to the playoffs, you don't have Max Pacioretty. You don't have Svechnikov. Not looking good for Carolina, but still there in first. I think they'll probably end up dropping here. New Jersey, though, still firing all us in. There's lots of weapons in New Jersey getting solid goaltending and defense. They're good at every single position. The maturation of Jack Hughes has been big. According to Timo Meyer, been big. They're winning close games against good teams. The Rangers are going to be really dangerous. 7-2-1 and one in their last 10, four wins in a row. Since making big moves at the deadline, Tarasenko has scored. Kane has been scoring. Uh, Keandre Miller. Did you guys see Keandre Miller? Did he get four points last night? I lost count. It was at least four points. And but on Carolina, I will give credit to Kakanyemi, who is – been up in you know at a much more important role and he has been ooh, that is weird um he has been putting up points so you got to give him credit i mean not my favorite player wow new jersey thumped tampa bay five to two maybe coach is right they are struggling defensively in tampa maybe going into the first round the matchup the toronto maple leafs want is finally tampa is that bubble finally burst? The guy who is not in Tampa is Andre Palat. Where is he? New Jersey. Wow, John Carlson would likely like to play soon after sustaining his December 23rd skull fracture. And Washington, ooh, that's been crazy without him. I mean, that's really tough. One of the best five or seven defensemen in the NHL. He's still out. That's crazy. Well, speaking of shadow, Joel Hofer, our, his brother Ryan Hofer played for the Everett Silvertips, but he's a forward. But Joel Hofer, former Team Canada goalie for the World Junior Championships, gets a shutout last night, and St. Louis wins 3 nothing With Jordan Benetting suspended, they go with the rookie Joel Hofer, and he gets a shutout. <laughs> Good job. Congratulations, Joel Hofer. If that works out, he had 33 saves to beat the Jets, who are trying – to hang on to the playoff spot. They had a big win the other night against, I think it was Seattle, and then they lose. So they're four, five, and one. And suddenly, you know, they have Calgary a bit on their tail. There's still four points between them and five points with Nashville. So St. Louis getting to play a little bit of a spoiler. You know, I as I kind of thought in the beginning of the year, I did not believe in Seattle. Edmonton has now jumped up into the third in the Pacific. They have 86 points, and they're they're four points back of Los Angeles. They're seven three and zero, but LA do not count out. LA are seven one and two. Look at Vegas at eight two and zero. Oh. Crazy things going on. Just to wrap up in the East, Detroit ain't coming back anytime soon. They have lost two in a row, two seven and one in their last ten. The question was, when will Steve Yazerman make this team Tampa? He's making the defense big, that's for sure. No Ben Sherratt last night. Same outcome, 5-1. to one. So last night is the night before. Ugh, I don't know what to say here, guys. They need more consistent offense. They need better defense. They were better with Philip Ronick. I thought Chason would be a good fill-in for Oscar Sunfist, but Sunfist did score the other night for Minnesota. I think they're going to really like him. I liked him. Tyler Bertuzzi not doing much in Boston, but there's so many weapons there. Listen, Seattle is not that good. I am telling you, it made no sense. They have everyone's fourth defenseman, if you look at it. You tell me who their number one defenseman is. Vince Dunn? He's not a number one on any team, in my opinion, except Saint Seattle. Like, Adam Larson is a number three, four. They are not better than teams that are ahead of them. I don't, I don't Or behind them. I don't know. I don't see it. I mean, I think on paper, Nashville would be better. But they had a great start to the season. They've had some great runs. They are a quick team, and they got lots of weapons, and depth can win you games. And that's kind of how they've done it. Matty Beneers maybe will, you know, is the Calder Trophy winner. But he's even kind of slowed down of recent. Look at who's not far behind him, by the way, is Mason McTavish in Anaheim. I mean, don't be surprised. I don't know if that gets Mason McTavish – Rookie of the year. And I thought for sure that the, you know, the, the Vegas goalie would have been the guy and maybe the Carolina goalies in consideration now. Cause you know, the Vegas goalie has been hurt for so long here. Logan Thompson. Well, 
Which Jones? Martin Jones? Yeah, he that was a he knew that bubble was gonna burst. He's been terrible for years. You don't suddenly turn into a superstar goalie. He wasn't even that. He wasn't even didn't even have good numbers. Is he below nine hundred save percentage now? I mean, sometimes goalies get hot, and he seemed to be playing up to his potential. He has all the potential, but Martin Jones was not, in my opinion, going to be a long term, you know, number one in Seattle. They got a Goalie platoon there. Grubauer has not been good, and they've been without Chris Kreider. Is Kreider finally back soon, or has he come back? I think he has. I haven't really paid attention. The best goalie in the NHL remains Lainey's Olmark at 1.97. Philip Gustafson for the Minnesota Wild, 2.08, and Jeremy Swayman, 2.20. Don't look now, but fourth is Ilya Samsonov, and then Sorokin, and Jake Ottinger. So those are the kind of the top goalies in the NHL. Uh, I don't know. So, you know, it's crazy because Buffalo loses again last night. This team is such a roller coaster. It's just so crazy. And Florida is very hot. And who do the Detroit Red Wings face next but the Florida Panthers? Three losses in a row for Pittsburgh, and suddenly they are in jeopardy. They're Florida within one point of Pittsburgh. So this game is super important. What was the score last the other night? Was it 9-4 to four or something in the Florida game? Am I wrong? Did I did I miss something there? Did that really happen? Is that my ima imagination? Maybe it was my imagination. There was a crazy game there. So they they beat the Devils four to two. They beat the Canadians nine to five. Was the final score on Thursday? <laughs> they lose five four to the Jets. So they've been scoring. This is not good news for the Red Wings, who are just not stopping pucks, not throwing out great defense, not really. Look at the numbers. I just don't see this for Martin Jones. So will Vili Huso go up against Bobrovsky? You have to think most likely. This is an important game for the Panthers and not an important game for the Red Wings. The last time they faced each other in January, it was a 3-2 to two win for the Panthers. But the Panthers have been scoring a lot lately, and they have a lot of weapons. They should be doing much better, and of late they are. So suddenly they are now in contention for that wild card playoff spot, and Pittsburgh's on a three-game losing streak. Matthew Kachuk traded from Calgary for Jonathan Huberto. This trade, along with, you know, yes, Mackenzie Weger. If Calgary gets in, that's good. But Huberto is playing second and third line in Calgary. He is not liked by the coach. He's not doing great. Matthew Kachuk is loved in Florida and for right, <laughs> rightfully so. 11 points his last five games. Sam Reinhart, five goals. This is not hard when you have a nine to five win. You have a four to two win <laughs> and then a five, four loss. Lots of goals being scored. I mentioned before Alex Chase on three goals in the last five games that those were he hasn't scored in the last two. So this is a busy week for the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah, he was winning, but now he's been given he's back to Martin Jones. Nonsense. Uh Florida tonight, St. Louis tomorrow, St. Louis back to back. So they actually play at home, go on the road, then come back home, and then they go on the road again to play Philadelphia. This is a checkered month for the Detroit Red Wings. None of these games mean much for them. We're just hoping. Good morning, RJ Calabro. Thank you for joining. I mean, this is a busy weekend next week, frankly. So they have seven games in the out of the next 14 days. That's not much playing or practice time. That sort of thing usually leads to injuries. Will we see Simon Edmondson again? He played 15 minutes in his debut. Not too bad, not too shabby. Played pretty well. Coach is doing a good job protecting and working him in. Uh, no Ben Sherratt. Will Ben Sherratt be back? I am not sure. I'm not sure it matters. It is what it is. We, we want to see individuals do well. So we want to see Jonathan Bergeron score. We'd like to see Dominic Kubli get some points here. We'd like to see Simon Edmondson get some playing time. I like seeing Jake Wallman succeed and Moritz Sider. You want to see the young guys like Joe Valeno do well. And that's all you're really looking for right now. And then you kind of recoup at the end of the year and you say what moves you know right now run with kings it looks like they might they're super hot at the right time 
that team on paper should be much better. I think with a better coach, like a Joel Quenville would have had this team well up in the standings. No, Anthony Duclair does hurt a little bit, but they're very deep. I don't care what anybody says. They should be doing much better. And those goalies should be doing better. I just don't think the defensive scheme of Paul Maurice ever works in any AHL team. It creates havoc for defensemen. And that's always been the case. And the only reason they're winning is they're scoring a lot. So something's going on there, but it's not defense. And I just don't think that bodes well in the playoffs. Pittsburgh been very, very inconsistent. Like three games in a row they've lost. They were firmly in that wild card space and looking up and then right back down. So this is going to be interesting, folks. All right, so – Tonight's game, Florida Panthers, 7 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern in St. Louis. We will recap this on Wednesday. Hockey Nation fans, check it out, and we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday morning, 11.15 Eastern. And that's all she wrote.